your mind needs exercise and needs nourishment just like your body does. And your mental health depends on what you put into your mind. You put the wrong stuff in your mind, you can literally go crazy. A lot of, lot of these people that just watch pornography all the time, they have lost their natural minds because of what they keep feeding into their mind. You can't, you can't sit in front of stuff that is not good for you and keep putting it into you and thinking that it's not going to affect you. I, I've heard kids say, you know, there's so much music. When I was a kid, music couldn't have cuss words in it. TV, yeah, TV wasn't no cuss words. And maybe after midnight, they might have something on there, a little, little risque or something. But, but before before midnight, but while, while the kids was up, wasn't gonna, nothing going to be. Now at 24-7, you can see and hear about anything you want to see and hear. Yeah, even in the cartoons. And, and, so, and we wonder why there's so much murder, so much lasciviousness. We wonder why all this stuff is going on. Because people, they feeding themselves with that stuff. And it affects you. You can't, you can't feed yourself with stuff and think it's not going to affect you. What gets in your eye gate, your ear gate, what you listen to, kids say, you know, well, I, I, don't, I know it's a lot of cussing in that, but I don't listen to the words. I just, I'm just like the beat. Yeah. The instrumental version. <laughs> they, they, they like to hear the, you know, the rap. And, and, you know, the thing is, whether you listen to the words or not, they're still going to get in your spirit. You, you can't stop it. Music is a powerful tool. And people know that, too. Who is that? Somebody said, allow me to control the music of a people, and I will control the people. Who, who, do, who do the majority of people listen to when things uh, come up? The singers. Who don't have a clue usually about anything that's going on. But it's the ones that are like the, the major, well, I can't use Michael Jackson no more because he's gone. <laughs> Elvis Presley. I mean, you name them. You have Kanye West. Yeah, whoever the big ones are now, Jay Z. I mean, Beyonce. That's who. That's who people look to for uh, guidance. <laughs> it's because they control the music. They're the ones that the people are listening to. And when they control the music, they control them. It's like the Pied Piper. Y'all know the story of the Pied Piper? <laughs> your mind, your mind is so important. And the Bible tells us what to put in our mind. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any, what, virtue, if there be any praise, That's what's supposed to be on your mind. Not the latest soap opera. Not what's going on on Dynasty. Empire. Yeah, Dynasty. That was about 100 years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> Shows how much I look, look at TV. But, them are all, you know, all these programs. See, that's what controls the people. The programs. And they think it's real. I, I shared with y'all that the lady got up in the... In the in the te yeah, testimony, in testimony service, asking prayer for somebody on a soap opera. Called 
their name out and everything. And, and didn't nobody know who they talking about except the people that watch them, you know. So, some of the saints was looking like, I don't know that. Who are they talking about? And the other ones were giggling, you know. <laughs> they talking about the soap opera. Because <laughs> so-and-so did so-and-so so wrong. They went out and ran off with so-and-so. I mean, he talked like them people are real or something. But it affects your mind. I'm telling you, it'll take over your mind. That's why you need to have the word of God in you and let that take over your mind. An active mind, active mind. They, they say that when uh, one reason people get Alzheimer's and dementia is because they don't keep their minds active. I've heard people say, oh, when I get out of here, I ain't going to open another book for the rest of my life. <laughs> Talking about getting out of high school or, or getting out of college or something. You know, I ain't going to, boy, I, I tell you what, don't really worry about me. If you don't keep your mind active, and, and you need to be filling up with good stuff. You know, some, some people got active minds. They're just putting the wrong stuff up in there. got to exercise your mind. Keep it active on good things in it. And then attitude. <laughs> Anybody know what attitude is? Change your mind and change your life. An active mind. Change your mind, change your life. A capacity of the brain. There's so many Estimates of how they say your brain has the capacity to learn many different languages. I mean, just, your, your brain is so powerful, more powerful than any computer that has ever been created. Your brain. That, 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 there you go. The brain is what came up with the computer. The brain is, is powerful. And, and the ability and the potential that you have. And, and they say that most of us never even tap into a, a percentage of the power that we have in our brains. The capacity of what you have, what you think you become. I mean, know that's in the Bible. Yep, and the man thinks it's so easy. So what you want to be like all day? Dynasty? <laughs> what, what, what do you want to be like? Now this says, as a man thinking, so if you want to be Jesus, be like Jesus, what should you be thinking about all the time? Jesus said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. If you keep your mind stayed on me. Is, is that what he said? How many of us love peace? I hope, I, I hope if I say how many of us love confusion, nobody raise your hand. That's the opposite of peace is confusion. War. Turmoil. Yes, ma'am. You forgot. <laughs> Inactive man. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I tell you, the mind, what should we think? We already talked about that, the things that are true, honest, just, pure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What are you filling your mind with, the active mind? Our attitude. Somebody would have asked you, to, or, or would maybe I should say this: If somebody would would have asked somebody else, what kind of attitude you had, what would they say? <laughs> would say, depending on how they know you. <laughs> I mean, hopefully, you know, anybody could say, yeah, they got a good attitude, because most people, you know, they know. Uh, whether you are a pessimist or optimist, most people are one or the other. You know, uh, uh, 
very few people are completely one way or the other, but most people are predominantly one way or the other. You know, either all, always look at things from a negative standpoint or either always look at things from a positive standpoint. I think I told y'all the story about the man who had two sons. The one was a total pessimist. The other one was a total op optimist. And so he went to uh, Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson told him, uh, here's what I want you to do. <laughs> he said, on Christmas, I want you to get the one that's a pessimist. I want you to get him all kind of stuff and put him in the tree. And he said, the one who is an optimist, I want you to get him a box of horse manure. Wrap it up nice and put it under the tree. He said, we're going to break both of them. And so the man took Dr. Johnson's advice. She had good counsel. <laughs> and he, on Christmas morning, he came down and both of them was under the tree. And the one, the pessimist, little pessimist boy was over there crying. Uh, and he said, son, all this stuff is yours. What are you crying about? He said, my new bicycle, I'm probably going to fall off and hurt myself. And, 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 and my new ball, Johnny probably going to steal it from me. And, and well, he just went on. Man just shook his head. Now, uh, while he was shaking his head, he saw the other little boy over there with the box of manure laughing, just laughing. And he said, and what are you so happy about? He said, oh, daddy, where's the pony? <laughs> So that's your optimist and your pessimist. <laughs> Amen. Pessimist, stuff's always wrong. Optimist, nothing can go wrong. It's always right. And we need to find somewhere in the middle there. Amen. <laughs> the Bible says have the mind of Christ. What kind of mind did Christ have? A loving mind. Was the songwriter said, he saw the best in me. Jesus saw the best in most people. He had problems with the Pharisees. <laughs> he, had, he had problems with the people that was robbing the saints, amen, the people selling stuff, you know, taking, charging people to be saved in the temple. He had problems with that. But other people, he didn't, had no problem with the woman caught in adultery, I mean, you know, it's even people we'd have problem with. He didn't have no problem with. He had no problem at all. He just told her, you know, go and sin no more. Praise the Lord. He didn't have problem with the woman at the well who had five husbands and the one she was with wasn't hers. <laughs> Some of y'all been walking around calling her a hussy, and slut, and all. <laughs> she just had no problem with her at all. Praise the Lord. He said, I can give you water where you never thirst again. Go get your husband. <laughs> yeah, he had a way to deal with people, you know, without putting them down. We like to put folk down. Attitude. What kind of attitude did he have? He had the kind of uh, attitude that, what you say, love, a loving attitude. He had the kind of attitude that a servant attitude. Somebody say servant. He, he wasn't looking to be served. And uh, the, the Bryants gave me a book. I forgot the name of it. But <laughs> one of the first premises of it was that the church is not supposed to be a place where we come to be served. It's a place where we're supposed to come to serve. To serve others, not to come to... Uh, and it, it made the example about like a country club. You know, when you join, join a country club, you join it for the amenities. You pay your dues and you expect to be served. Praise the Lord. Come there and get a good steak. You know, come play golf. Come do, if you, if you have a party or something, you can get one of the rooms because you paid your dues. And they said that's the way people look at the church. You know, I paid my dues, now y'all serve me. Some, you know, if I need something, you supply it. That's not why we, that's not what the church is. It's supposed to be just the opposite. It's we come, 
through the church in order to serve. Not what can I get, what can I give? Why are y'all quiet? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Talk about the attitudes. That's why people leave churches. Because y'all ain't serving me good enough. First thing they say, ain't got no love over there. <laughs> Is that why you came to be loved? No, we're supposed to come because we love Jesus. And we want to serve him. Why y'all so quiet? How come I ain't getting no big old amens up in here? Amen. Amen. <laughs> attitude. I'm telling you, your whole, your attitude will control your life. You got a bad attitude, you will be miserable and make everybody around you miserable. If you have a good attitude, people are drawn to you. They want to be around you. Because most of the time, they're around so many people that have bad attitudes. They just want to be around somebody a little bit positive, you know. <laughs> just a little bit positive, you know. Huh? Yeah, bring some sunshine. I mean, no, it shouldn't rain all the time, should it? I mean, I know we need some rain at nine then, but I mean, you know. <laughs> Your attitude. Attitudes are contagious. Y'all know what contagious means. You know how you can catch a cold, somebody sneeze in your face. You probably gonna you probably gonna walk around with that cold that they got. Attitudes are contagious. You be around somebody long enough. You ever come to church and just have in your mind, I'm gonna praise God when I get in it today. And you sit down next to somebody and you say, Hallelujah! And they look at you like, like, what's wrong with you? So you say, Hallelujah, they look at you again. And after a while, you just as non-praising as they are. Because <laughs> their attitude done wore off on you. Now you sitting there with attitude. Looking at them. Everybody sitting there with it. Y'all ever gone to church and, and one side of the church seemed like they on fire and the other side of the church seemed like they as cold as a refrigerator? I mean, see, how, almost how can you have that in the same building, you know? <laughs> But I guarantee you, it's because of attitudes. I don't know about you, but I'd rather have a good attitude than a bad attitude. Now, the thing about it is, sometimes it's harder to have a good attitude than it is to have a bad attitude. Because we just, we just born in sin, y'all, and shaped in iniquity. And we just, we just, I don't know, something about negativity we like. We like seeing... We got trouble. We like saying, yeah, I got it worse off than you. We like, we like comparing pity parties. Yeah, this what happened to me. You ain't heard nothing yet. Look what happened to me. I, I, here's what I want you to do, though. If you, if you ever get in a situation where you come into a service, and you sit in the non-praising section. Just somehow you got in the non-praising section rather than the praising section. And you get up and say hallelujah, and they look at you funny. I want you to look them in the eye, the one that looked at you funny, look them right in the eye and say, I said hallelujah! And smile at them. Now, one of two things are going to happen. They, they either going to say, yeah, hallelujah, or they're going to move. Either way, you win. Amen. <laughs> and so you help set the tone for your section. Hallelujah. You take over. I, I heard somebody say, you be a spiritual thermostat rather than a spiritual thermometer. You know the difference between a thermostat and a thermometer. A thermometer is something that your mama used to stick in your mouth or under your arm or in other parts of your body in order to tell your temperature. <laughs> but a thermostat sets the temperature. Whatever you put it on, it's going to keep on chugging away till it gets there. And so we need to be spiritual 
thermostats, not thermometers, where we just come in and let everybody influence us. We come in with our minds made up. I'm going to praise God today in this place. Be like Shouting John. Y'all heard the story of Shouting John. Shirley Caesar's song went viral with that. They had her all over there. <laughs> Was it potatoes, tomatoes, and <laughs> greens? <laughs> Y'all need to look up Shouting John. Praise God. Saul's attitudes influenced by David's plan. And y'all know, uh, y'all know the story of that, right? When Saul, uh, at first, his, his, his attitude was really good toward David. He made David one of his armor bearers. Praise the Lord, he liked David. David killed Goliath. And he was, he was fine uh, until they start singing songs about uh, Saul had killed his thousands and David his ten thousands, then jealousy and envy entered the picture. And we're going to talk about jealousy and envy too, uh, but uh, Saul uh, was influenced by David not only by his attitude, but by his, his musical ability. And talking about music again, when David would play on the harp, Saul's attitude would change. But sometimes... Our attitudes are demonically influenced. The devil will put a, a, a spirit of depression on you. He'll put like stuff in, in, in your mind and, and uh, sometimes um, music. Good. So who, who mentioned about classical music? Yeah, there's power in music. They, they say that, that certain kind of musics they play and flowers will flourish. And they say other kind of music like acid, rock music, and stuff like that. They say the flowers will die. <laughs> so Dave, uh, Saul, had, then he got a bad attitude toward, <laughs> attitude toward David. How, how many know jealousy and envy will, will cause you to have bad attitude? And then it says lessons on attitude from Psalm 34. Who knows how Psalm 34 starts out? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise. What kind of attitude is that? His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. Now, now the reason I got that up there, lessons on attitude from Psalm 34, is because this, this is really a very positive attitude psalm. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me out of all of my fear. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man that trusted in him. I mean, just on and on and on. But if you read the first part of this psalm, it's got what's called a, a, a pre-section. Psalm 34. It's not part of the psalm, but it says uh, this was the psalm that was written uh, when David had been uh, at the uh, Abimelech, had been before Abimelech. Read it in your Bible. Well, it's not in every Bible, but and it's the story of when David was running from Saul and didn't have nowhere to go and ended up in the uh, camp of the Philistines. And they caught him and took him to King Abimelech. And, he, and the Bible said he feigned himself to be mad. Y'all remember that? He was acting like he was a madman. He spit going down his beard. And Abimelech said, and he said, this is the one that killed our champion, Goliath. And Abimelech looked at him and he said, this guy's crazy. He said, get this crazy man out of here. <laughs> and, and when all of this was going on, he's chased by, day, by Saul. He's in, his life is on the line before the king of the Philistines. He goes immediately to the cave of Adullam. And starts writing a song. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. No, that ain't it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue. He's hiding out in a cave, y'all. Be in my mouth. We're talking about attitude. What kind of attitude do you have when you're having trouble? Where's your attitude? 
<laughs> I think it's part of the reason God said this is a man after my own heart. Only one in the Bible God said that about. The brother had a good attitude. He sure wasn't perfect, y'all. He was a murderer. He loved him some women too, man. <laughs> he got he got he got in a lot of trouble over women. But uh but he loved God. And that's the key right there. He really loved God. He wasn't playing. He wasn't playing. He was a worshiper. God honors that. Optimist and pessimist. All right, what was Israel in the wilderness? Were they optimists or pessimists? <laughs> when, when, when Moses sent, them, sent the ten spies out, two of them came back saying, yeah, we can do it. Uh, ten of them came back, it was 12 sides. Ten of them came back and said, Man, we like grasshoppers in their eyes. There was giants in the land. The two came back and said, There was giants in the land. We can take them. Two of them said, There was giants in the land. <laughs> they both saying the same thing. Yeah. They, they was coming back saying, look at all this stuff. Look at this other thing. They're going to kill us. And the other two said, look at all this stuff, man. Look what God done gave us. It's all attitude. All of them saw the same thing. They saw exactly the same thing. But how did they respond to it? It was according to their attitude. You got a negative attitude, you always going to respond to stuff. God will put a blessing right in your face and you Call it a curse. You got a, a good attitude, you take something that is a curse and make it a blessing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Your attitude is so important. Believe in God for miraculous healing. There have been people, I've heard stories of people that have uh, been... Um, Come down with cancer. The kids are coming in, so I got to cut it off. But have come down with cancer, and instead of getting down and negative, um, actually went out and start ministering to other people that had cancer. And God healed them of the cancer as they ministered to other people that had the cancer. Now tell me it doesn't take an awesome attitude to do that. When the doctor done told you you're going to die, and instead of you worrying about yourself and crying and carrying on. You're going out ministering to other people who have cancer, encouraging them and telling them, you know, God is able to, to help you. And Praise God. Goal of 10 praise reports for every negative report. Is that a pretty good goal, y'all? So, we're not, we not going to say that we're not going to have no negative reports, but let's have for every negative report, report that means you got to have 10 positive ones. Will y'all go on that journey with me?